Hey coders, what's up? Chris here, and this is episode five of how to build a YouTube video app. In the previous lesson, we had displayed the video titles in our scrollable list, otherwise known as a table view. Uh, and in this lesson, what we're going to do is display the image thumbnails in this table view. So remember in the video model how our video objects have a video ID? Well, we're going to need to use this ID to get the thumbnail image. I want you to take a look at this URL I've got in this browser window. So notice that the video ID is in this URL here. If I put a different video ID in here, it's going to give me another thumbnail for that video. So this is what we're going to use. So I'm just going to copy that. But actually, before we need to use that, let's jump into the storyboard. And we're going to have to add an image view into this prototype cell. Well, how tall should this cell be? If we take a look at that browser window again, we notice that this thumbnail is 320 by 180. So we can use that as a starting point. Let's say 180 is the height. So we go to table view right here, click it in your document outline. And then on the right hand side, you see this row height. We can change that to 180. Um, and that's going to make it a little taller. But we're going to find out later that depending on the screen size of the device this app is being run on, um, it's not going to work out. But let's just put it at 180 now, just so we can see the thumbnail itself. And down here in the object library, remember to be in this tab right here, I'm going to search for the image view and I'm just going to drag it into our prototype cell. And then now we're going to have to add some constraints to it to make it hug all of the edges of the cell. So make sure you have your image view clicked. Click this guy right here. Uh, uncheck constraint to margins. And then let's add all four edges. And let's go 0, 0, 0, and 0. I'm going to add these four constraints. Click this guy to update frames. And then we're going to see it hug there. And then you're going to click the image view and go over to this tab here in the inspector because we want to change the tag number for this element. Uh, it's default to zero, but we're going to change it to one. And you're going to see why a little later on. OK, so now let's go to the view controller. We're ready to download that image and display it onto the cell. Um, scrolling down to here, cell for row at index path. Right now, we grab a reusable cell. We get the video title right from the video object that it's trying to display. That's this guy right here, videos array, and then we pass an index path dot row. Uh, and then we get back the video object that we want to display, and then we access the video title property. Uh, and then lastly, we assign that into the label, the default text label of the prototype cell. Okay, so now what we want to do as well is construct the video thumbnail URL. Okay, and that's going to be a string like this. Uh, we're going to construct this string with the video ID for the video we want to show. And then we're going to create an NS URL object. And in iOS, when we work with downloading data and URLs, we do it with this NS URL class, which represents a URL to a resource. And then we're going to pass in that URL object into an nsurl request object and then finally we create an nsurl session and then we create a data task and pass in the request so at a high level those are kind of the steps that we're going to take um, just simply to download the image from this url so try not to get lost. Um, I'm, I'll go slow and I hope you can follow along. So first of all, let's construct the video thumbnail URL. So let video URL string equals, uh, let's copy this again. And I'm going to break it up though. That plus I want to pass in the video ID here. I'm just constructing the string because the video ID is kind of in the middle. So I'm taking this part plus the video ID plus this part to create the full string. So the video ID is, let's go videos array, and then we pass in index path dot row dot video ID plus this last part here. 
like that. Make sure you've got the slash and the slash here. Okay. Now we're going to create an NSURL object. Let video, actually this shouldn't be video URL, this should be video, let's say video thumbnail URL string video thumbnail URL equals NSURL create a new NSURL object and it has an initializer uh, with the string here where we can pass in this guy like that and let's create an NSURL object now so let request equals NSURL request and it's got an initializer where you pass in an NSURL um, so we're going to use that so we're going to pass in this guy right here. However, the NSURL constructor here, it creates a optional NSURL. So that means if it's not successful in creating this object, it's going to be a nil value. Whereas this expects an actual NSURL object. So I'm just going to put an exclamation mark there that unwraps this guy. So if it turns out that it cannot create this NSURL object and video thumbnail URL is nil, uh, this probably is, won't be a good thing. But if you wanted to, you could add a check. Just before you do this part, you can add a check that uh, the NSURL object actually does exist there. Uh, you know what? We can actually do it really quickly here. So let's just use a simple if check if video thumbnail URL is not equals to nil, then we do all of this stuff. Otherwise, we, we don't even try to download the image. Okay, so let's create an NSURL session. Let session equals NSURL session dot shared session. And it's going to return a shared session object that we're going to use throughout the whole app. And here, we're going to say let data task equals session dot data task with request there's a couple of them make sure you choose this one because this one allows you to pass in an NSURL request which we have and also specify a completion handler which means it lets us execute some sort of code when the image data has been downloaded which is exactly what we want so for the request let's pass in this guy right here and for the completion handler, all you need to do is just double click it and it's going to create that block for you. So it added some code. You can see here, code is what we would write, what we want to happen after the data has been downloaded. And here you see three parameters that where we can access the data. So this uh, is the data that's been downloaded. This is the response that the server returned and and here would be an error if there was an error. So I'm going to double click each of these like that. And I'm just going to give them all a name. So I'm going to call this data. I'm just going to call this parameter response. I'm going to call this one error. Okay, so here within this completion block, we do have the image data in here. Okay, so here we want to um, get a reference to the image view element of the cell. Create an image object from the data and assign it into the image view. All right, so how we do that is remember back here in the storyboard, we gave this image view a tag of one. That's going to come into play here. So we're going to say let image view equals cell. Remember, this is the cell that we got up here. Cell dot view with tag. And we're going to pass in one. So this method retrieves the element with that tag, but it doesn't know what sort of element it is. So we have to assign it. Uh, we have to tell it essentially using this as exclamation mark UI image view. So that's what we're we're telling Xcode it is. So now that we have the image view element here, let's assign image view dot image equals UI image. We're going to create a new UI image object and we're going to say use this one. Initializes and returns the image object with the specified data. 
So you can see data up here is an optional type, meaning that data could be nil. Uh, we're actually going to just unwrap it like that and pass it in. So this kind of completes everything. Uh, just to recap, we are constructing the video thumbnail URL. We are creating an NS URL with that string. Uh, here we're checking to see if there is an NS URL object that has been created with this. And if there is, we're creating a request with it. And then we're creating, we're getting the shared session. And then from the session, we're creating a data task and passing in the request. And finally, we're specifying some code to happen when the image data has been downloaded. Now, one thing I want to mention is that this data task with request method is going to fire off this request and it's going to download the image data in the background. So it's a background worker or a background thread that is doing that sort of work. When it's done, we don't actually want to be updating the user interface from the background thread because that causes all sorts of issues. As a best practice, you always want to be updating the UI from the main thread. So what we can do is kick this code back to the main thread to execute. So you can think of it as the main thread is firing off this request and this work to the background thread to download the image data in the background. And then when the background thread is done downloading that data, it's going to kick back this work to update the UI. It's going to kick that work back to the main thread. So here's how we do it. We write this patch underscore async and we're going to use this submits a block of asynchronous execution on a dispatch queue and returns immediately so in here queue we're going to specify the main thread as the one we want to dispatch this work to so we're going to write dispatch oops dispatch get main queue okay so it returns the default queue that is bound to the main thread so it's going to put that work in the queue for the main thread to execute. And for this block, this is where we're going to specify the code we want to kick back to the main thread. So let's double click this to open up a block. And we're just going to cut this code, command X, and then paste it inside the block, command V. So now uh, it's going to take this and then dispatch it for the main thread to execute. Okay, and last but not least, we need to kick off the data task. Right here, we've just merely set up the data task. To kick it off, all we need to do is go data task dot resume. Okay, so now we should be ready to go. So command R, I'm going to run the app. Okay, so you do see the image data behind this label. You see these white squares? That's just the the label that's blocking it here. We set the the default text label and we set the video title to it so the label has a white background so we can either set that background to clear but you know what we're not going to be using this default label anyways so what I'm going to do is just I'm gonna delete this line for now and we're not gonna have a label for now so I'm gonna save it and rerun it okay so now we actually see our video thumbnails so I'm going to stop the app. I'll show you, like it looks stretched, right? If we go back to the storyboard and we click the image view, and then in the mode, it says scale to fill. So that's why it's stretching. We're going to change that to aspect fit. So it's going to maintain the aspect ratio and it's going to try to fit it. So now you see these, these borders here for the iPhone 6S. If we go a smaller screen and we just do iPhone 6S and I run it, you're going to see that the margins on the left and right are a little slimmer. And then if I show you the 5S, oops, that simulator is hiding behind. Okay. So if I show you the 5S, you can see that the thumbnails fit exactly. So that means that we can't specify a row height like this. Um, statically like if we put 180 here it's not going to work for all screens instead what we want to do is calculate the width of the view to see how much of a height we should set for it okay so i'm going to go into the view controller there's actually a table view delegate method that we can set the height for in code so 
maybe up here above number of rows in section I'm going to write table view and and there's a delegate method called height for row at index path so kind of like cell for row at index path except this is the height for row at index path so you return a height for the cell that it's asking for or for the row that it's asking for so here we want to calculate the width of the screen to uh, let's say get the width of the screen to calculate the height of the row so here we want to say self dot view dot uh, frame dot size dot width and that's going to give us the width of the view uh, next we want to divide this by 320 so I'm just going to use this aspect ratio 320 by 180 right so the width divided by 320 to see what's the multiplier you know we're comparing the two widths and then using that multiplier we're going to multiply that by 180 which is the height to give us the new height and I'm going to return this so now if I run the app again, you can see that it still looks fine on the 5S, but let's show you what it looks like on the 6S. So it's still, see it calculates the height dynamically, and let's show you what it looks on the 6S+. Plus. So everything looks good. Although these thumbnails, I wish they were in a higher resolution so it wouldn't be so blurry on a bigger screen. In the next lesson, we're going to add the label for each of the cells. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. Bye for now.